Hello, I want to fax to Mars. And... Hang on. Here we have our... Uh, Mad Science update for today. From... One of the wackiest... Left-wing sites on the internet today, the Washington Post. Scientists say the global ocean circulation may be vulnerable to shutdown. More vulnerable to shutdown than we had thought. Oh boy. See, if they're doing a political thing, they'd be getting a snakes in the grass update, but we're gonna do mad science and with the side of mental dis disorder liberalism since these uh, people are mentally disordered. Name of the author is Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Harvey. Did Hillary name her? Uh, intense future climate change could have a far different impact on the world than current models predict. Suggests a thought-provoking new study. Just how the sci journal Science Advances. So I'm going to open that page. Actually, I already opened the page. I forgot. There's nothing here. I got a 404 error. Request the page content forward slash 3 forward slash 01 forward slash E1601666. Could not be found. So right there, the source is uh, doesn't have anything on it. This is typical of the Washington Post. If atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations were to double in the future, it finds a major ocean current, one that helps regulate climate and weather patterns all over the world, could collapse. And that could paint a very different picture of the future than what we've assumed so far. The Atlantic Meridional, Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, is described as a large oceanic conveyor belt. It's a system of water currents that transports warm water northward from the Atlantic toward the Arctic, contributing to the mild climate conditions found in places like Western Europe. In the North Atlantic, northern, northward flow, flowing surface water eventually cools, sinks down to the bottom of the ocean, and another current brings that cooler water back down south again. The whole process is part of a much larger system of overturning currents that circulates all over the world from pole to pole. But some scientists have begun to worry that AMOC isn't accurately represented in the current current climate models. They're using models, they're not uh, actually showing what's going on in this world. They say that many models portray the current as being more stable than real life observations suggest that it is, actually is. Really? Recent model studies have suggested that AMOC is weakening, although there's some scientific debate about how much of this has been caused by human activities, how much by natural variations. Right, like, I can uh, go out there with a motorboat and change something? Come on. Nevertheless, authors of the new study point out many climate models assume fairly stable AM AMOC that could go, that could be affecting the predictions they make for how the ocean will change under future climate change. <sighs> the climate's going to change no matter what we do. It varies year to year. Every single year it's something different. Another sip of coffee. And because overturning circulation patterns have such a significant effect on climate and weather, all over the world, this can have big implications for all kinds of other climate-related projections as well. This is 
a very common and well-known issue in climate change models, says today's lead author, we, why will you a postdoctorate associate at Yale University? Lou and his colleagues from UC San Diego and the Wacko Nutcase University of Wisconsin at Madison took a commonly used climate model and corrected for what they considered to be AOC stability bias. Then they ran an experiment to see how the correction would affect the model's projection under future climate change. They instantaneously doubled that double the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration from present-day levels to both uh, corrected and uncorrected models, and then they let both models run for hundreds of simulated years. Differences were striking, and the uncorrected model AMOC weakens for a while, but eventually correct, recovers. In the corrected model, the AMOC continues to weaken, and after 300 years, it collapses altogether. In the commentary, also published in Real Climate, Stefan Romsdorf, motion physics expert at Potsdam University for Climate Impact Research, explained how such a collapse could occur when the AMOC gets too weak. Fresh water continually flows into the North Atlantic through precipitation rivers and ice melting. You won't, but supplies of solid waters from south to the Gulf Stream balances. If, however, the current slows, there's less salt supply, and the ocean gets less salty. Because fresh water is less dense than salty water, this process can lead to a kind of stratification in which lighter fresh water gets stuck on the surface and can't sink to the bottom when it reaches the cooler north. When this happens, overturning process that drives current back down south again can't occur. But you'll have more of the uh, precious ice you say you want at the uh, North Pole. There's a critical point where this becomes an unstoppable vicious circle that is beyond. That is bullshit. This is one of the classic tipping points in the climate system. Uh, Mr. Romstorff, sir, you know damn well the climate's going to vary every year no matter what we do. There's no such thing as a tipping point. Unless that big yellow sun we see up in the sky decides to go dark. Then you'll see. Then you'll have your tipping point. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> or if it decided to go Nova, you'll fry to death. Resulting climactic consequences compared to the uncorrected model are also dramatic. Without the usual transport of warm water in the north, the corrected model projects a marked cooling over the North Atlantic, including the United Kingdom, Iceland, and Northwestern Europe as well as in the Arctic, where the sea ice begins to expand. Gee! Have you nitwits heard of the Little Ice Age? <sighs> because of the AMOC is part of a larger global conveyor system which carries warm cold currents between the equator and both poles, model predicts, dis predicts disruptions in other parts of the world as well. Without cold water moving back and forth again, the corrected model indicates stronger warming patterns south of the equator than was predicted in the uncorrected model, causing a polarization in precipitation patterns over the Americas. More rain going to places like northeastern Brazil and less for Central America. The model also predicts a greater reduction in sea ice from the Atlantic. Am I supposed to care about all this? We'll worry about this in 300 years. But it's under BS. They're talking about uh, 
you're going into an, another ice age. They've been in it before. It's called the Little Ice Age. Look it up. I guess you scientists haven't heard of this. Nor is this nitwit who uh, writes Chelsea Harvey, who writes the Washington Post. It was called the Little Ice Age. People, people were uh, holding skating parties on the Thames River. And we've warmed up since then, that's true. At least for the most part. This is just utter BS. Uh, the whole global warming thing, I'm going to explain this one more time. This is called extortion, in case you don't know. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get all these countries pony up money and will protect you from mighty global warming in return. That's extortion. It's a variation on, you know, you get the hoodlums to say, we'll help protect your store. Problem is, if you don't uh, pay them their due, they beat the shit out of you. That's all this is. It's extortion. Is the climate going to vary? You betcha. <laughs> Absolutely it's going to vary. Uh, and one other thing here. <laughs> the carbon dioxide level isn't going to instantaneously double. And that screws their uh, whole thing up right there. I'm Artifacts of Mars. This has been... An Mad Science and Mental Disorder Liberalism Update. Thanks for watching.